So good morning, sir, and good morning, ma'am, and a very pleasant day to one and all present here today. We, the students and faculties of MBA, have gathered here for a guest lecture organized by our School of Management, DDGD Vaishnav College. We have with us the students of first MBA gathered here to take part in this occasion. Myself, Sindhu, of first MBA, take immense pleasure in welcoming Sumit Kedia, Chartered Accountant, A.K. Lunawat and Associates. Sumit Kedia is a practicing Chartered Accountant and part. Partner at AK Lunawat and Associates, specializing in indirect taxes (GST). He is presently advising a portfolio of clients from automotive, auto ancillaries, IT or ITES, construction, infrastructure, education, and entertainment sectors. He has carried out GST impact study, implementation, and training for various public sector undertakings, listed entities, and other corporates. He has authored a comprehensive book on GST audit and annual return, and And also on key implications of GST on financial statements, which was released by Sri T N Manoharan, Chairman, Canara Bank, Batmashri Awardee, and past President of ICAI, and Sri K M Ravi Chandran, Commissioner, GST, and Central Excise, Chennai South Commissionery. He is associated with the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India as a resource. For the CPE program, GST certification course, and also as a faculty member for educating CA students, he has addressed more than 200 seminars on indirect taxes at various platforms, including ICMA, CII, FICII, Comptroller and Auditor General of India, Defence Training Institute, Government of India, National Academy of Customs, etc. Indirect taxes and narcotics. Control and State GST Departments, Service Tax and Central Excise Commissionery, Large Tax Payer Unit, International Chamber of Indirect Tax Professionals, Chartered Accountant Study Circle, Society of Auditors, University Trade Associations, and many other. Sumit is a member in various professional and other forums and is an executive committee member at Tamil Nadu Economic Affairs and Taxation Panel Committee of Confederation of Indian Industry that is CA. He has contributed articles in various professional magazines including Chartered Accountant Study Circle, Out Industrial Outlook Magazine and Industry International Fiscal Association. On behalf of our director, ma'am, Dr. U. Amaleshwari, and other faculty members, we take immense pleasure in inviting you, sir, and thank you for us accepting our invite. We are awaiting to hear your enlightening speech, sir. The stage is all yours. Thank you, Sindhu, for this wonderful introduction. Uh, now I will just share my presentation to start the session. Am I screen is visible? Yes, Sumit, your screen is visible. Yeah, okay, we can see that. Yeah. So, um, um, see how I take my sessions for students is it's not only one way communication. I would want you all to also participate and share your views. Uh, you can unmute only the respective person maybe who wants to can unmute and share their view about what is the budget whenever I ask you. Okay, right. So uh, before we start. a uh, budget is a much much awaited event in our country because it is supposed to be a futuristic event um, and if you see since last 4 to 5 years a lot of big developments happening in budget and more from compliance perspective the budget is shifting to reforms perspective so if you see um, electric vehicles when we talk about electric vehicles before 3 years no one imagined that it will catch up such a pace in a country last 3 years there have been huge uh, you no know, a dependency or huge priority on evs if you see uh, they have given lot of benefits uh, tax benefits on vehicles uh, scrappage policy has come in so lot of boost is being given to ev now can anyone tell me what is the normal rate of indirect tax the gst we pay on purchase of a car let's example um, you buy a creta a hyundai creta car worth let's say uh, 13 lakh rupees can anyone tell me what is it or let's say 10 lakh rupees what is the amount of gst we pay on that vehicle let's say you and i when we go and purchase a vehicle how much portion of tax we pay to the government on that let's say approximately a 10 lakh rupees worth of car if you buy how much tax you pay roughly you can just estimate it can be 2 lakh 4 lakh 6 lakh 1 lakh just an estimate someone wants to share the view or you can put in chat box also no problem some 3 lakhs sir 
Okay, your good name? Rakesh. Thanks, Rakesh, for sharing your view. Also, Rakesh has said approximately three lakh. So he is talking about thirty percent. So one more person has posted in the chat box about eighteen percent, right? Okay. So uh, Rakesh was little closer to that. So if you see, the rate of GST is twenty-eight percent. Plus, there is a cess as well. The cess goes up to fifteen percent. So almost on certain specified cars, we pay forty-three percent indirect tax. That is GST, forty-three percent. So probably in ten lakhs worth of car, you might pay around four lakhs of indirect tax itself, GST itself. So just imagine the tax we pay indirectly on certain products. Income tax we pay on our income, but GST is an indirect tax we pay on to our suppliers indirectly in other forms. So if you see, the taxes are so high. So what government has done is in EVs, electric vehicles, etc., the rates have been reduced substantially. Just to promote electric vehicles, to make it affordable. Why? Because electric vehicle is new in the market. There is a lot of R and D cost involved. There is infrastructure. Uh, there is not much infrastructure. If you see, charging stations are not much in India. It will take time to develop those, those infrastructure. So already the EVs are expensive. So government has reduced the indirect tax burden on EVs. So if you see, government is trying to make consistent efforts to bring EVs for pollution control, to bring scrappage policies. Because of scrappage policies, if you see the old vehicles rates have increased. If you see the cars, the lorries, the old vehicles rates have increased. So government is trying to push on those sides where we they are talking about infrastructure. They have said we want to develop 400 railway stations, 400 trains, uh, so airports. So lot of spending is being done on infrastructure. Highways they want to develop. So around two billion investment have been announced. So lot of Push is being made for infrastructure. See, if you see, if there is push on infrastructure side, automatically majority of the industries are dependent on infrastructure. You just imagine when we construct a house, okay? When I construct a house, there are so much uh, materials being used, so much industries are dependent on real estate. You talk about steel, you talk about copper, you talk about granite, you talk about sanitary items, you talk about wood, you talk about labors. So you, there are so many industries. Direct industries around 40, 50 industries, and indirectly there are 150, 200 industries dependent on real estate and huge labor force, right? So, government is trying to fuel real estate in a country. Last three, four years, if you see the spending they are making on infrastructure is huge. So, government is trying to make consistent efforts, which is you no, know, uh, which is quite visible uh, in their budget spending or in the results they are bringing in. So, just a small background of government's intention in the budget. Talking about income tax rate or GST rate or customs rate, there are very less changes because government's focus is shifted to reforms instead of doing minute changes here and there. So it is more reform-oriented budget instead of a tax perspective budget, right? So with that, as I said, what is union budget? I said budget is basically uh, it's a basically yearly statement government has to bring in before the fiscal year begins. So if you see, union budget of India is a country's annual financial statement. As per Article 112 of the Indian Constitution, budget presentation is mandatory before a new fiscal year begins. So, uh, see, uh, we are basically a uh, uh, democratic country. So, any spending government wants to make, they cannot decide as such. So, it is presented in the Parliament. The budget gets asset from the President also, because government will announce or budget the spending. See, you and I plan our expenses. Families plan their expenses for the month. So our country definitely needs to plan their budget for the financial, right? So, so to say in simple terms, budget is really important whether it's you, me, I, our family, or our country. So that is the reason the budget holds so much importance in a country. When we talk about stock market, when we talk about uh, uh, other countries looking at India, or when you talk about exchange rates, people look at budget because budget shows the intention of the government. As to what they are planning for the next twelve months, so on that front, budget is really important. Where people, economists, other countries look out for, or rating agencies look out for how the government is bringing our budget, right? So if you see every year, you know we have this halwa ceremony. Why? Because budget holds so much importance. So I don't know how much many of you know. We have this halwa ceremony where you no know, before the budget, they they have this halwa ceremony. Because we say no, कुछ मीठा हो जाए. When we go out for some good work at our house, 
her mother might give us some curd or some sweet that have sweet and go out for good work so but this year because of owing to covid the halwa ceremony did not take place so government's intention is more on digital and technology sectors like infrastructure health education e services etc and they have termed it as amrit kal for the next 25 years that means they are going to change the shape of india now so uh, what significant developments government has bringing in now if you see after covid 19 last one and a half years the prices of the products have more than doubled you talk about steel you talk about cement you talk about electrical items which is affecting all of us everything has increased you talk about diamonds diamonds rates have also increased by 50% so you talk about any product coal see companies manufacture power with coal right the coal prices have more than doubled it has almost tripled in last one and a half years so if you see everything is becoming expensive and that is resulting in increased inflation so if you see majority of the products are getting expensive because a lot of imports are being stopped many countries example let's let's take an example of tires can anyone name name the big tire companies in our country tire companies big tire companies in our country tire so jk tire yeah we wait thanks jk tires anyone else mrf mrf bristol tire ch so we have lot of tire companies right now if you see whenever you go to change your tire for a two wheeler or a car generally the shopkeeper will offer you 10 types of chinese tires and two three types of indian tires and many people will generally prefer chinese tires because they are way way cheaper than when you talk about mrf or apollo tires or jk tires or cement so what has happened in last one and a half years the chinese tires has been completely banned in india you cannot import so the import of chinese tires has been completely stopped what is this resulted in make in india now when you go to change your tire for a car or two wheeler the shopkeeper might give you some options because he might have some old stock but otherwise majority options he will give you is for indian tires just imagine the boost of make in india so that is what the indian government is doing now what has happened since government banned the tires import of tires what has happened intermittently the prices of tires also have gone up high because the supply has reduced the same has happened in all the industries so i am just giving an example when you go to a market and buy some items let's say example in your house there is a the, your handle of the door is broken you go in the market to buy a new handle the prices would have almost doubled in last one and a half years see you can see in every part of the product you know and a day to day usage you, you go and you buy electrical items anywhere if you see the prices have doubled this is one of the major reason lot of industries imports have stopped chinese productions have impacted highly so what is happening is supply is less demand is same or it is increasing so because of that product prices have increased completely can anyone tell some other reason why prices of the products are increasing in our country or probably across india Can anyone tell me you are an MBA student? So, somewhere you think why prices of the products are increasing like anything in last one and a half years in the country? Any other reason you can think of? Sir, uh, it may be because we are not importing much as expected. I mean, in order to reduce our dependency and also to make sure that we are supporting our local production. So, yeah. for local production. Uh, we may actually give more money thanks vivek thanks for your comments so thanks for you so vivek rightly said you know so this is the major reason and uh, darshna has posted in the chat box inflation and it's a pandemic effect right you said so darshna has told it's a pandemic effect so if you see pandemic uh, one of the major reason because of pandemic what happened was see you, you rightly said pandemic but what happened because of pandemic see if you see a uh, lot of imports lot of containers there was a big shortage when you talk about imports and exports in case of imports the containers were not available the shipping freight the ocean freight when the vessel comes from foreign countries to india the vessel rates have more than doubled the containers the vessels itself are not available so if you want to import you have to wait for containers containers are not available because because of the pandemic lot of containers are stranded at various places in china other places 
so what has happened there is no containers availability so prices double triple prices people are paying for the transportation charge for getting goods from outside the country to india so if you see there are a lot of genuine reasons because of this pandemic and there are certain various other reasons what government is making that is making various reforms to make in india right so big boost to our economy in the last 3 4 years and the budget is also focused on make in india and on the reform side so as i said next 10 years or like um, uh, government said amrit kal 25 years i'm pretty confident the way our government is making steps our country is going to surpass all the expectations in the coming years definitely the best country to invest at present is india so when we talk about investment people generally invest in foreign markets us market stock markets but i believe the best is indian market because the best is just to come in india the way government is taking incentives bringing reforms is no uh, is massive so uh, with that let's see what significant development government is making in sectors so quality education so government is uh, you all would have seen no there is lot of uh, online education see earlier uh, probably before one and a half years you also would not have imagine that you will have some online sessions in ca chartered accountancy courses we never imagined we'll have some online courses specifically in tamil nadu people used to always prefer physical sessions but if you see in one and a half years last one and a half years it has no uh, 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 it has got a reach by leaps and bounds the online trainings online sessions online meetings have caught up like anything because of the pandemic see if you talk about youtube uh the valuation of youtube has more than doubled in last one and a half years just imagine more than doubled in last one and a half years nowadays anything and everything you find in youtube right so all of us including you and me lot of times when you are unable to uh, sort out something we go on youtube right and find out an answer you will get a video for each and everything right if you want to fix your cycle if you want to fix your car if you want to fix your laptop if you want want to buy a new phone you want to review for something each and everything if you want to solve a problem everything is available in youtube right so the valuation of youtube is doubled in last one and a half years so what is happening is everything is going digital so government is also saying in their budget that they want to focus more on digital education to reach nook and corner of the country to reach a larger masses so that is the reason if you see government is trying to focus more on 5g uh, they are manuf- they are they are increasing more manufacturing of optical fiber cables so that the internet connectivity can reach to small villages and towns also so government's intention is very clear they want to reach the towns and villages due to internet connectivity right nowadays you just imagine internet is available at so many places last 3 years or last 1 and 1/2 years the, the the reach of internet has reached increased magnanimously right so government in this budget also they are placing more focus on quality education they say high quality e content will be available will be delivered through digital teachers right virtual labs and skilled e labs to promote critical thinking skills and stimulated learning environment so they want to go digital in teaching and education also they are saying digital education ecosystem for skilling and livelihood they start e portal will be launched to promote online training so they are going to promote lot of training courses where people students can go and watch and join those online training courses which will be conducted by the government of india startups will be promoted to facilitate drone shakti for drone as a service so when we talk about startups government is trying to give lot of benefits tax benefits also lot of manufacturing companies they are bringing the tax rate down to 15% See, anyone has an idea how much tax we pay? What is the maximum income tax rate in our country? Maximum income tax rates? Sir, thirty percent. Okay. Anyone among the students is into some startup or their family is into some startup? Or any student here has a vision that he wants to, you know, uh, make a startup in future? okay so so if you see startups are catching up like anything like in the beginning i was saying about ipos see what is happening is uh india has a lot of skill sets right last 2 3 years what has happened we have seen is 
people are quitting their well settled jobs and coming into startups but the fact cannot be decided that cannot be denied that probably the success ratio is only 5 to 10% in startups 90 to 95% startups do not succeed so it's only about 5 to 10% startups there is no doubt risk involved but there's a saying right is risk hai to is hai right so people are taking up those risks and coming to startups so government of india is also encouraging startups they are bringing a lot of tax benefits quick approvals for startups in a country last two years we have seen a lot of startups in a country registering for startups and bringing up new and interesting models raising funds series a series b various funds and they are coming to the stock market also even loss making companies are coming for ipos 5 crores 10 crores companies are also coming for ipos stating that they have a huge future potential right so government's potent intention is to promote startups in a bigger way banking sector see the government wants the banking sector to reach the rural parts of the country people was government is trying to promote banking why because government do not want cash transactions this government bjp's government intention is very clear they don't want cash transactions they want to go cashless we all have seen demonetization right that was one of the biggest impact on cashless transactions believe or believe it or not digitization uh, this demonetization was one of the big steps for digitization nowadays people in india also have been used to you know uh, do gpay or transfer online when they go to restaurant they go to small shops to buy fruits vegetables see if you see nowadays even when you go to a barber shop i don't know how many of you have seen they will have a paytm or a gpay right small barber or small saloon shop or small vegetable shop they will also have a phone pay gpay or bharat pay right that is what india is moving to before 5 years no one would have imagined that india will come to such level right so government's intention is to make more a digitization so if you see an online bill system will be launched to reduce the delay in payments all central ministries will use those billing systems so government wants everything all the bill payments to be cleared online whether you talk about any bills you pay also credit growth has increased by 5.4 lakh crore this year the highest in many years so government is trying to infuse money they are saying bankers to infuse money to the businesses to uh, you know uh, uh, and those who are msmes registered udyam registration those entities to give some amount as loan even without collaterals agriculture sector government is trying to promote agriculture because there is one of our strength so promoting chemical free natural farming starting with farmers lands close to river ganga launching fund with blended capital to finance agriculture startups delivery of high tech services for farmers to be launched because we all know right that tech is missing in agricultural sector in our country so government is trying to promote tech based services for farming in our country so in this budget they have allocated amounts and they are trying to promote agricultural activity in our country and as i was talking about 5g so 5g spectrum auction in 2020 to 23 bharat net project contracts for optical fiber networks will be handed over out under the triple p model so if you see what is the optical fiber network so see optical fiber cables these cables are required to take the connectivity from one place to another right to connect the to connect various places to pass the internet connectivity so this has to be laid down across villages places to get the reach of internet connectivity so government is trying to increase that all villages should have the same access to digital resources as urban as i said government's focus is to increase right internet connectivity to make internet connectivity affordable and reach the masses in a country including small villages and towns e vehicles and energy as i said about electric vehicles energy efficiency and saving measures will be promoted a battery swapping policy to be brought out with interoperability standards to boost the electric vehicle ecosystem finance minister announces 19500 crores allocation in pli for solar modules 
Now, what is this PLI? This is called as production link incentives. See, government has brought this scheme, PLI scheme, production link incentive scheme, to promote production in a country for certain sectors. Example, electric vehicles, example, solar modules. See, government wants more people to come and produce in a country. They want you and me also to do production. They want to make in India. So they're saying you do production, we will give you incentives. What incentives in terms of monetary benefit based on the production, etc. See, uh, I don't know how many of you know, but when you do exports in a country, see from a, from a country, if you do exports, let's say example, you export laptops, computers, mobile phones, electric gadgets, electronic gadgets, etc. When you export goods from a country, let's say textiles, garments, Governments, government incentivizes you. You get a lot of benefits from government in terms of monetary benefits. So because government wants people in a country to do more exports. Now, can anyone tell me what is the reason? What benefit India will get if there is more exports from a country? Can anyone tell me what benefit government will get, India will get, if there is if you and me export more out of the country? It's, a, it's just a general logical question. Why government wants to promote more export from a country? Anyone else other in than order Vivek? to increase trade also. Other, anyone else other than Vivek? To increase the value of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To increase the value of money in our country. To increase the value of money in our country currency. Money in our country, okay. Okay, Nitya, thank you. Uh, Rakesh, you were also saying something. Uh, to maintain the balance of payment. Fantastic. Okay. Yes, Vivek, now you can also say. So that would actually also increase, uh, boost up our economy also, sir. We are exporting, okay. so we will be getting more revenue. Right, right. Great, great, great. Uh, see, uh, like Nitya, Rakesh, Vivek all said, it's all the same because see government wants to promote exports by because we get various benefits one is net foreign exchange see our exchange rates you all know right when we export import we have our exchange rates indian exchange rate versus us dollars which is pounds etc right so our our cash flow our net foreign exchange determines our exchange rate right so the more balance of payment like rakesh used the word balance of payment so our country would always want our exports to be more than imports. See, that is the reason government wants to uh, discourage crude oil imports. Can anyone tell me what are the major imports in a country? What are the top two products which are being imported in a country? Top two products which are being imported in a country, the top two largest products. The one is crude oil. Yeah. Other is Other one is anyone, what is the other product where we have huge imports? Gold. The, gold. Is it electronics, sir? Gold, gold. Okay. So gold and crude oil is the largest ex imports in a country. So huge foreign exchange is going out of the country. See, as I said, balance of payment, net foreign exchange is very, very important because money should flow in the country. Money should not go from a country outside India. Government wants money to flow into India, right? So now exports means we'll do a lot of manufacturing, we'll export. So automatically sectors are growing, employment generation is there, plus we are getting foreign exchange in our country, right? But crude oil and gold, right? So government wants to discourage gold and crude oil. To discourage coal, crude oil, one of the measure is EVs, electric vehicles. So the government is promoting electric vehicles so that we can reduce our dependency on crude oil. So these are all measures because government wants to reduce the dependency on crude oil and gold. Can anyone tell me, government wants to discourage gold, right? Can anyone tell me what is the rate of GST on gold? When you go and buy gold, let's say from GRT or from Sarva Sarvatnam or you go to Joy Lucas, you buy some gold. What is the rate of GST you pay? Three to eighteen percent, sir. Like three to eighteen percent. Three to eighteen percent. You are giving a big bracket. Approximately what rate? Three percent. Okay. Darshana has told three percent. Anyone else? 
So government said that we want to discourage gold, but the rate of GST is still 3% because of various political re the, the reasons. The rate of GST is 3%. What is the rate of GST on medicines? Five to 12%. So we pay more GST on medicines than gold. What is the rate of GST on diamonds? Diamond. Diamonds 0.25%. So probably there are a lot of reasons why government has kept lower rates for these. But point is, government wants to discourage gold and crude oil because these are these are huge imports, the top two imports in the country. Huge imports we do. So governments gradually want to government wants to discourage these imports. Right. Next. Now, so uh, can anyone tell me? So our, our population is around 130 crores. Out of 130 crores, can anyone tell me how many people file income tax returns in our country? So we are talking that government wants to, uh, government talks about budget in the budget every year that we want to increase compliance, we want more people to come in the tax brackets. But anyone can say me how many people in a country file income tax returns, probably in percentage terms or in terms of numbers, anything is okay. Approximately. Very lesser percentage. 20%. 20%. Okay. Anyone else? 10%, I think so. Very lesser. I think. 3%. 3%. Okay. Anirudha said 3%. 5%. Sir. Sorry? 5%. 5%. Okay. Vivek, what happened to you? I thought that I would rather give opportunity for others also, sir. No, no problem. You can also. Sir, um, I guess it would be not more than 10%, sir. Because, yeah, population, uh, and th that's also. Okay. So, if you see, it's it's almost 5%. That was 3% earlier. It is slowly, gradually increasing to 5% now. So, approximately 5% people in income, India file income tax returns. Not pay tax, I said. File returns. Out of those five percent people, one percent file nil income tax because they don't even pay tax. They declare income below the threshold limit of two point five lakhs. They declare one one lakh, one point five, two lakhs, and they file returns. So, people who pay income tax in India is only about three point five to four percent people in India pay income tax. Just imagine, large country, large taxpayers, but tax one is very less. But this is gradually increasing. Right in India, this is this figure is increasing gradually over the period of time. Last three four years, this numbers are increasing. So just I wanted to show you that. So income tax filings are very less, but gradually the numbers are government is trying to increase those numbers, and the tax collection is increasing. Why? Because. Uh, People are disclosing more income now. Earlier, people would have had an income of let's say 50 lakhs. People used to maybe disclose 20, 30 lakhs, but now there is a lot of awareness. The government has brought strict compliance. There is huge penalties if someone does not disclose their income properly to the government. So those penalties have increased. See, in foreign countries, why people don't evade tax? Because penalties are huge. Same thing is happening in our country. If people are caught, huge penalties are being levied in indirect tax as well as direct tax. So that is the reason, one of the major reasons why compliance is increasing in our country, right? Now, anyone knows about what is cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies? Yes, sir. Yeah, Rakesh, can you say? Uh, it is a blockchain based uh, like currency. It is a digital asset, sir. Okay, okay. So if you see, when you talk about digital currency, uh, these bitcoins were being discussed across stating whether the uh, uh, bitcoins will be banned in a country. So a lot of discussion was going on whether to ban this uh, cryptocurrency, these bitcoins, because these are all not very well regulated as of now. 
and uh, there is huge fluctuation, right? So just to protect, because if you see in India itself, a lot of youth have started investing in bitcoins, in cryptocurrencies. So there are a lot of rumors across that government might ban these. But in this budget, if you see, government has brought tax on these cryptocurrencies, digital assets, virtual digital assets. So the intention looks like government do not want to ban them, but to regulate them. And that is the reason probably they have brought tax on these digital virtual currencies. So they have said in this budget, our Honorable Finance Minister Nirmala Sitraman said that these digital currencies will be taxed at rate of 30%. So that means if you make a gain of 1 lakh, you will have to pay 30 lakhs tax plus surcharge, etc, etc. So that shows intention that government might not ban it, but might regulate it, right? So they've introduced a new section, 115 BBH, where they've said that any income arising from transfer of digital assets will be taxed at 30%. No deductions will be allowed except the cost of the asset. So it says, right? Because the virtual digital assets are also being taxed now at 30%. So that shows the intention of the government. They want to regulate cryptocurrencies. So uh, anyone here has invested in cryptocurrencies? Anyone here? Yes, sir. Okay, right. Rakesh, interesting. So which currency you invested? Like I have in Harmony, uh, Cardano, and uh, okay. like many coins are there, sir. Nice, Rakesh. Nice to note that. So uh, awareness is very important. See, I don't say that we should invest in Bitcoins, but probably 2,000, 3,000 if you invest, you get, you get an idea of what's going around in the world and you get an idea of things. See, if you are interested in financial systems, you should know and know, you should have a knowledge about everything what's going on around you. See, when you complete your MBA, companies come in for placement or you go for placements. You should have a knowledge or a hack of everything, right? So you should definitely know about what cryptocurrency is all about, whether you invest or not. Investing, I would definitely not advise because it is a, it's a, it's a risky asset, probably a small amount, or probably a, a 5% of your savings or 3% of savings. If you invest, that's fine. But Otherwise, definitely I don't advise assets, but definitely you should have a knowledge of what is cryptocurrency is all about. Anyone else here investing in shares? Capital gains, shares? Okay. So, uh, uh, because this cryptocurrency and stock market is, a, is the present boom, right? Last one and a half years, our stock markets have made all the time new highs. And it is still on a very increasing trend. The global markets and Indian markets are doing really well. A lot of companies are you know, uh, getting the right valuation now. So uh, digital currencies, as I said, these are taxable. And we are saying that gifts are also taxable in, in case of digital assets. See, a lot of people do tax planning. They will give properties. The, the father will give property to the daughter. The, the son might give, the, uh, the brother might give the property to his another brother. He might give to his son. So there's a lot of tax planning available when you talk about gifts. So I can give shares also, I can give properties also, I can give gold also. So they have said that gifting of digital assets, these virtual currencies also will be taxable in the hands of the receiver. They have said further that on digital currencies, there is tedious applicability also. Anyone knows about what is tedious? Tax directed at source, tedious. What is tedious? Anyone has an idea here? Some kind, of some kind of transaction charge, sir. Yeah. So basically, if you see, a government introduced tedious to increase compliance in the sense, you now let's say example, um, let's say example, I'm, uh, uh, let's say, uh, taking a training for a corporate and I bill them 10 lakh rupees. I get that money and I don't pay to the government tax. Then let's say example, I, I hire a painter to paint my office. I pay him 2 lakh rupees to paint my entire office. Whether that painter will pay income tax to the government, chances are very less, right? So there's a tedious concept here where out of his 2 lakh payment, I will deduct a small percentage, let's say 2000 rupees and pay to the government with his PAN number. So what will happen is with the 2000 rupees, government will be able to track his income tax returns. That if someone has deducted 1% tedious 2000, that means his income should be 2 lakh, his turnover should be 2 lakhs. So government is able to trace those who are not filing income tax returns 
or those who are not disclosing proper income because of the provision of TDS. So CMD have brought this concept for virtual currencies also where they have said on transfer of virtual digital currencies, bitcoins, TDS also will be applicable. Arbitrary returns, the government has said that if someone has missed to file their income tax returns in the last two years or have not disclosed proper income, they can do so now. They will open the facility and people can still file their not file return, which for which the time limit already lapsed or has not disclosed proper income. So this is basically uh, there was there was a cess which you used to pay in income tax. That was not allowed as a business expenditure. They have done it, so nothing to do answers for you. This is more of a business um, amendment. Uh, you know that when you buy a property, see, let's example. When you buy a house, do you know that we should deduct TDS also? See, you and me, not even businessman. So let's example. You buy your house for personal use, right? It's, it has nothing to do with business. When you buy a house, you should deduct something called as TDS on house also. There is not much awareness in the public that there is TDS applicable even on a purchase of a house. Even on rent. So let's say example, you are staying in a rental house and you are paying rent of more than 50,000. You should deduct TDS. Many people are not aware about these provisions because they are not into business. So they are not into tax laws at all. But TDS is applicable on various transactions. When you buy a house property, you buy a house, a residential house, you are required to deduct TDS. When you buy a land, a plot, you should deduct TDS. People are still not aware in our country, but there are a lot of provisions to that. So they have brought certain provisions on those lines, where they are saying TDS on immobile properties. They have made certain changes to that. See, uh, can anyone say me what is stamp duty value? See, when you go and buy a property, there is something called as you know, a stamp duty value. What is that stamp duty value? Anyone has an idea? So if you see, what is that stamp duty value is? Now, let's say example, you go and buy a piece of plot, let's say near Arumbakam, near Digivashna College. Let's say in Mogape, you are getting a buying a plot of land, small plot, let's say worth 15 lakh rupees. That plot stamp duty value is basically government value. Government has fixed the value for the land on which you have to pay a stamp duty of 11%. So let's say example near Arumbaka Mogape, you are buying a small plot for 15 lakhs and government value is 20 lakhs. So although you are buying the plot for 15 lakhs, you will have to still pay stamp duty on 20 lakh rupees. And income tax is also applicable on 20 lakhs and not 15 lakhs. So that is the concept of stamp duty value. Your parents might know that. So, so basically TDS also they are bringing in line with stamp duty value. So that is what the amendment we have done when we talk about TDS. So tax evasion, right? So they are saying that if someone is doing any tax evasion, there is an undisclosed income. So they will not allow any set of of any losses, which is carried forward. Now, indirect tax, finance minister said that GST has been a landmark re reform of independent India, showcasing the spirit of cooperative federalism. So they are saying that these challenges were overcome and we can now take pride in a fully IT driven and progressive GST regime that has fulfilled the cherished dream of India as one market, one tax. And if you see the collections of GST has surpassed previous months. You see, the January month collection was 1.4 lakh crore. Single month collection was 1.4 lakh crore. Can anyone tell me what is the reason of this increased GST collections? What could be the reasons? Just think logically, why the GST collections are increasing month by month and it has increased to the largest, largest highest figure of 1.4 lakh crore in January month. Why so? Can anyone think it? Tell me some reasons. If you see, 
Sometime back I told you the prices of the products have increased. Last, because of COVID, see, if you see, there's a big boost to the real estate industry now. If you see the prices of houses and land is increasing in last one year, last probably six months, the big, big builders are saying that they are, they are witnessing highest ever collections, highest ever bookings. Automobile companies are saying they are witnessing highest ever bookings of cars. So, plus the price of products have increased. Automatically, GST collections will increase, right? Because the, 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 the product which you used to buy for 1 lakh rupees, now you have to buy same product for 2 lakh rupees. So, earlier you were paying GST for 1 lakh, you are now going to pay for 2 lakhs, right? So, the prices have doubled, so automatically GST collections will increase, right? These are certain compliances in GST where they've increased the time limits. So, uh, um, there are certain time limits in GST to claim input tax credit to cancel your registration, etc. etc. So, government is trying to relax certain measures in GST with increasing certain time limits to file file your income tax claim last date, etc. etc. Which is not much relevant for students. So, but they're trying to ease certain strict measures in GST. What is this cancellation? See, Comment is saying that everyone has to be compliant. Comment is saying that if you don't file your GST returns, indirect tax returns, we will cancel your GSTN number. That means, comment, as I said, government is trying to make bring more and more strict measures. See, what you get to what you get to know from this point is, government wants compliance. Government do not want black money. Government wants strict compliance in a country. They want people to pay tax, comply with the law. So only I said the government has brought in penalties of 100 to 200 percent. If someone does a tax evasion, he might be resulting into pay 200 percent penalty. See, example, if I if I move my truck from let's say Broadway to Arumbakam without proper documentation from Broadway to Arumbakam, let's say it is going, it is unaccounted goods, black money, unaccounted goods without proper invoice, without proper, without proper document. If a vehicle is being caught by GST officer, I might be asked to pay 200% penalty. And that is happening, that is happening. A lot of highways, if you see, GST officer's vehicle will be standing for verifications. So just imagine the plight of those who do not want to pay tax properly, they will be resulting into pay 200% penalty. Three years back, three, four years back, government brought a new act, Prevention of Money Laundering Act. See, a lot of people will do money laundering, right? Binami Transaction Act. People will have a lot of money, cash transaction, they will register property in some other rain. These are all Binami transactions. So government intentions are very clear. They do not want black money. So more and more strict measures are being introduced on the reform side and also on the tax side that comply law properly. Otherwise, you will face the penal consequence. So government said that if you pay GST late, tax late, we'll have to pay a higher rate of interest also. So all these beans things are being made. When you talk about customs duty, a lot of products government has reduced custom duties on diamonds, gemstones, uh, import of mysteries, capital goods, agricultural items, etc. A lot of products government has exempted. So if you see this, in case of agriculture, to promote agriculture, government has said that if you import a lot of chemicals, drugs, products which are used for agriculture purpose, we are going to exempt custom duty. When you import goods, you need not pay any duty at all so that your costings comes down. Farmers can also import these products. Companies can import these products and encourage farming or agricultural activity in our country. Duties on packaging boxes, etc. has been reduced. So if you see a lot of products, custom duties have been reduced to encourage those activities which are basic activities like farming, agricultural, education, etc. in the country. Now, with this, I have tried to cover on a broader perspective what the budget is all about. As I said, the budget is more focused on reforms than on compliance. Reforms, as I said, about EVs, about infrastructure, about making in India. So the budget focus is all about reforms. And uh, Basically, uh, those economists have welcomed this budget and they've appreciated this budget in the sense that the government focuses on the futuristic perspective. They're trying to promote more of infrastructure 
and EVs, which is good for the economy as a whole. That's it with this. I'm, I'm done. But if you have any doubts, questions, or if you want anything you ask, want to ask on the finance side, on the budget side, you can ask me. Uh, just a small piece of advice um, before I uh, call it. See, whenever uh, I ask questions, I saw certain uh, people like students like Vivek Rakesh coming forward to answer. So I assume that Vivek might be a class leader, class captain, probably. See, uh, always try to be expressive. Okay, what I've seen in interviews when we conduct interviews for MBA students or become students or CA students or qualified chapter accountants, MBAs, they lack communication skills. They are unable to express their thoughts. Although they might know the answer, they might have their perspective. But the problem is they are not able to put forth those views during interviews. Why? Because they have those stage fear. They have the fear to share their views, thinking they might be wrong. And what the person will think about me, if I say a complete wrong answer. Practically, I've seen people have this fear of talking expressing their thoughts or stage fear. So these are the forums, you know, your college is encouraging those sessions, you know, uh, 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 planning these sessions for you. Definitely uh, such a good thing, you know, but you should take proper advantage of it. Try to share your views, express your views, try to come forward, take sessions. It, it will all benefit you in future. Now you might not realize, but once you're out of your graduation or colleges, definitely you will realize this importance. So just a small advice. Please come forward, answer, come out of your stage fear. Whenever you get opportunities, try to grab that. If you see a small example, since Vivek was answering a lot of questions, I have made an assumption that Vivek is a class captain. I made an assumption. I don't know, but I made an assumption. Why? Because it looked to me like that he's the class captain. Because the way he was answering with confidence and sharing his views on many of the questions. So people form an opinion about you during interviews, right? In just five minutes or 10 minutes, they will form an opinion about you. So just a small advice from my end, since I'm handling so many students who come from CAs, qualified chart accountants, I take a lot of interviews. So just a small advice to all, try to grab opportunities, come forward and utilize all the opportunities your teachers are giving you at colleges. Done. So ma'am, over to you, if students have any doubts of the time is permitting, they can ask any doubts they have in the finance side or the budget side, anything. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Students, you have any doubt, any queries? Sir, I'm having one doubt, sir. Sir, uh, you told that. Uh, it's a bit uh, loudly, uh, Nitya Sri. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, are you told that uh, government has uh, reduced some customs uh, rates based on uh, certain products like agriculture and also encourage certain industries. Uh, but uh, but you you also said that uh, government has restricted most of the imports based around the tax by imposing major uh, taxes. Whether uh, in this budget uh, in encouraging these sectors, uh, it is uh, it is feasible for uh, uh, India to develop or not? Sorry, feasible. what was the last line? Uh, whether uh, in encouraging these sectors, uh, will government uh, revenue will increase or not? Sir? See, definitely, you know, if you see in, in a country, we do a lot of exports of agricultural items. When you talk about rice, wheat, sugar, so we have huge demand in the country and also we export out of the country. So definitely, even if you see the employment opportunities in farming. So if you see in a country out of 130 crores, there is significant number of people whose living is dependent on agriculture sector. So if you see in Uttar Pradesh, UP, you talk about Punjab, a lot of countries, a lot of states, if you see, majority of the people living is dependent on agriculture sector. So government is trying to increase those sectors because that will increase employment, that will increase those activities in those sectors. So these, see, in India, majority of the revenue comes from agriculture sector also because one of the strength of our country is agriculture. The government definitely wants to increase that and a lot of times if you see the custom duty increase or decrease, we cannot do too significantly. See example, if government wants to discourage certain products, they cannot ban all the products or increase the duties. Why? Because we also want to export to other countries. If we stop all the imports, other countries, countries also will stop imports from our country, right? So since 
we are a country we are a part of the country to our other countries we have lot of unions where india is also part of that so g20 also india is a part of it so everything as such we cannot ban or increase we have to uh, have good trade relations with other countries so considering all those government will make changes in the custom duty rates to encourage or discourage certain imports or exports okay sir so uh, i also have a question sir yeah, yeah. regarding the whole budget issue Uh, sir in the year actually uh, 2019 and 2020 sir as you said due to the china issues uh, pubg actually was banned because it was uh, a chinese uh, product so uh, later that they said that we are actually getting out of china and they started focusing on the indian gaming sector itself sir uh, and this year they had actually focused more on that so avcg promotion task force animation visual effects gaming and comic in order to like Uh, realize the potential of that whole uh, thing sir so any comments on that yeah see definitely like right you said see this is prevalent in many industries see last one and a half years lot of products have been banned as for imports from china because of various other reasons political reasons economic reasons uh, uh, you know uh, if you see lot of sites uh, digital products of chinese run by chinese companies were banned so one 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 um, site is there no where insta people have record their videos i'm not getting the name that was also banned right yeah, tiktok sir sorry tiktok tiktok sir yeah tiktok right true 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 so if you see lot of products entities uh, or services were being banned from china right because of various reasons so that has definitely increased make in india so government intention is really clear see this is a intermittent period because of this uh, transition period i would say prices are high but once in india we are able to sustain that people are starting more manufacturing entities prices will automatically come down what has happened is suddenly imports got reduced see in china also they have lot of power shortage coal shortage so uh, chinese companies are also not being able to export out of the country so lot of imports are being hit so automatically what is happening is chinese indian companies are being promoted lot of companies are setting up manufacturing entities in india A lot of foreign companies are coming into India, shifting their plants from China to India. So definitely, animation or any company, any products we talk about, make in India is a big boon to all these entities, all these products in last one and a half years. So automatically, since imports got banned or discouraged, Indians have started setting up manufacturing entities and manufacturing those products. Since it is all new, prices are high now. So that is the reason there is an inflation. But gradually, when lot of factories come in india automatically and slowly gradually prices will sustain in the country thank you sir uh, sir this is shailza yeah uh sir comparing to the previous year uh, this year they have contributed uh, more budget for the tourism sector so can you please share your views on because, that because um, a good question if you say tourism uh last about two years because of this covid the tourism sector has taken a big hit if you talk about many restaurants if you see in chennai itself lot of restaurants have got closed in chennai right lot of small small restaurants or good restaurants have closed in chennai so tourism sector has been worst hit in last two years because of covid 19 and this government always wanted to increase tourism because they want foreigners to come in india it is always that indians are going abroad and for tourism purpose right government has always wanted abroad people abroad to come in india for tourism because we do have beautiful places but still infrastructure is not that developed and what has happened is last two years because of this covid 19 tourism sector has been badly hit because hotels restaurants flights airlines those small small vendors all are affected because of this covid 19 if you see a lot of places like darjeeling shimla kashmir so many small small vendors who are completely dependent on tourism if you see dubai 
Dubai is completely dependent on tourism. Many of the major revenue in Dubai is either oil or tourism. So, like in India, there are a lot of cities, a lot of places like Darjeeling, Shimla, Manali, Kashmir, like so many places in India, Goa, which is completely dependent or major revenue is dependent on tourism. Why? Because there are small, small, so many vendors who are dependent on tourism. A lot of hotels have got closed because of COVID-19. A lot of restaurants have got closed. So, government wants to boost tourism in a country. They want to encourage people to again set up stores, again set up industries, again set up hotels, restaurants, etc. So to, to encourage tourism, they have brought a lot of benefits to this tourism industry in this budget. A lot of travel agents, in short, a lot of travel agents have closed their business because of this COVID-19. Uh, will, will this sector continue to grow because uh, in Europe we can see uh, they have uh, major contribution from tourism even india has uh, very good architectural uh, buildings and monuments everywhere so will tourism grow further despite this pandemic see i think definitely it will grow if you see uh, today if you want to uh, let's say book a resort or book a hotel in goa in shimla in darjeeling you might not find a good availability availability in good hotels in this month if you try go check in booking.com or go I give whatever website you go in, you will not find away easily availability. People have already started traveling. So tourism has already started in a country. The resorts, hotels are not available if you go for any booking for next one, one and a half months in good places. So if you see tourism already started, people have come out of the COVID-19. So if you see, uh, you go in any resort, any hotel, people are stopped wearing masks, people are getting casual again. Tourism has again started and I think because of this, after this Omicron, uh, people have got more used to it. It has become kind of normal fever now for many people. So tourism has again started and I think definitely it will increase in the times to come. See, because in the earlier generation, traveling was not much, holidaying was not much, eating outside was not much. But the current and coming generation, people want frequent holidays. People want to travel more. Right nowadays, I see so many people traveling in bike from Chennai to Kashmir, Chennai to so many places. People go in bikes, so people want to travel. People want to holiday. People want to eat outside. So this tourism is catching up like anything in this generation, and I think it is going to only increase in the times to come. One of the major reasons is social media. You know, people you find people posting their photos. I'm traveling here. I'm traveling there. People are getting encouraged and motivated. Right. So earlier generation used to save more, this generation spends more. So I think definitely tourism will increase and flourish like anything in the years to come in India. Uh, thank you, sir. So one last question. And yeah. uh, so what would you suggest for uh, people who are from non-commerce background who wants to start a new career in finance sector? See, as I said, see, there are a lot of career opportunities. Uh, when you talk about uh, non bcom in MBA, you are in which stream in MBA? So still, uh, we, are, we we don't get to choose. We, we get to choose the specialization next year. Okay, okay, right. So see, if you are in finance or non-finance, see, if you want to go to in finance background, there are a lot of opportunities available. When you, you have a lot of courses, like, you know, uh, after that, you can do CFA. See, uh, you can do CPA, you can do CA. See, nowadays, Finance is increasing like anything in our country. A lot of finance professionals are leading top, top organizations. So, and what has happened in today's need, today's date, a lot of business owners are wanting to know finance. See, uh, earlier times were there that managing directors are their chairmen of the companies. They will not have good knowledge about finance, but they will know how to run the company. Finance will be taken care by others. But nowadays the time trends have changed. People want to know finance. So being in finance field, you can even start your business. You can even start your own business. Being in finance field, you can make startups. No, see, startups is basically look around you and see what is the opportunity available. See, uh, uh, I will give a small idea to you. One of my friend in Calcutta, he started a startup. What he did was he saw that People are facing a lot of difficulty in drinking water. See, in Chennai also we have a good trend of canned water, right? We get water in cans, right? He saw in Calcutta that same problem here in Chennai also. He saw in Calcutta that 
people are finding so much difficulty they when the when the water is finished they have to call the vendors that send five cans of water four cans of water the same problem is there in chennai also in apartments they keep calling people that drink canned water etc he started an app for water what he did was he started a app mobile app where the water people can place order for water cans through the apps and he connected the water vendors so there were a lot of vendors who were listed in his app and there were people who were connected through his app and one person started his app and he started supplying his own water through the app so people had good convenience others were charging 25 rupees per can this person was charging 35 rupees per can but he got a good demand why people wanted convenience at a click of a button the water comes into the doorstep in next 2 hours or 3 hours just a concept he saw he saw where people were facing problem and he started the business so being in finance field you can start any business you know if you want to go for employment you have a lot of opportunities and someone has said that to talk more about cfa is cfa is basically chartered financial analyst this is again a course on finance where you get to know more about finance you can google you can put cfa course or you can talk in put in youtube you will get a detail complete detail information about cfa it has basically three levels level 1 level 2 level 3 so if you want to get into more into finance field you can go cfa there there is no there's lot of demand nowadays in equity investing uh, equity consultants finance consultants where you go for restructuring business how to raise finance for the market so there are various fields in the finance and yes you can start your own startups or business look around you where people are facing difficulty and you will definitely get some ideas where you can get into business yeah so hi our question this is nandita so you said uh, only uh, uh, 3.5% of the people in india are paying taxes so how can we increase this percentage sir see that's what i said no the government is trying to make strict efforts see because it's not that people are not earning in a country people are earning but they are not paying taxes probably because of lack of awareness or lack of satisfaction of staying in india that if i pay tax what do i get in return because there's not proper infrastructure people have complaints if you stay in us and you pay tax you get a lot of infrastructural benefits you get uh, benefits from the government there's a free schooling there's a free hospitalization etc so people have their own complaints of paying tax in india but as i said government is trying to make more efforts there are strict penalties being imposed if you do not pay tax there's more uh, transparency in the tax system so that is these are the measures the government is taking to bring more people into the tax brackets and increase compliance thank you sir sir a uh, 30% tax in cryptocurrencies do you feel that like it is uh, very high or it is correct See, probably it is high, but government's intention is like gambling also has thirty percent, lottery also has thirty percent. So in the same line, government is trying to treat cryptocurrencies also, virtual digital assets, and taxing at thirty percent. Definitely, thirty percent is too high. But just like gambling, lottery, government wants to keep cryptocurrency also in that, you know, in in that bracket basically, and they have kept the same rate of thirty percent on those assets as well. Sir. um this is shivesh uh, i want to know whether uh, ico will uh, increase in india sorry ico uh, that is initial uh, coin offerings uh, no i am not aware about this concept of ico it's uh, similar to ipo sir okay 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 see basically ico i i can talk about for hours of about ipo but i see i have never come across as such till now uh, it's similar sir uh, here they will use cryptos uh, instead of uh, normal funds okay okay fine is there possibility of blooming since the government is regulating uh, cryptos right now yes so it was uh, about a month back it was looking that government will ban cryptocurrencies because in foreign also some countries they have banned cryptocurrencies but right now looking at this government might regulate in the times to come because they have brought a tax also so we don't know whether cryptos will be further increase the country or not the times will say because government is waiting for other countries to bring regulations or to regulate cryptos probably seeing that government indian government also will bring rules regulations to regulate cryptos but i think it is the time will tell because it will take some more time for the cryptos to stabilize in your country okay sir. thank you sir
Shailaja, shall we wind up? Ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, we can. Good morning, everyone. Gratitude is the most exquisite form of courtesy. On behalf of DG Vaishnav School of Management, I'd like to convey my gratitude to Mr. Sumit, our guest speaker for the day, for accepting the invitation and gracing this occasion with his online presence. And your speech was knowledgeable and interesting, sir. And I would also like to thank you for spending your valuable time and enlightening us with your thoughts. I would also like to thank our secretary, Sri Ashok Kumar Mundraji, our captain, our principal captain, Dr. H. Santosh Babu, and also our beloved director, ma'am, Dr. U. Amleshwari, for her guidance and moral support. I'm happy to thank our faculty members for their extended support and assistance. Once again, I would like to thank all my friends for their patience and cooperation. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. We request you to join for a group picture, sir. Yeah, sure. Students are requested to turn their video on, please. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you Sumit. Thank you, Sumit. Actually, the session was highly interactive and uh, I think uh, many students were benefited because of this event. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. My pleasure, ma'am. Thank you.